Kiri Boss, which straddles the equator near the international date line, has found itself at the leading edge of the debate on climate change because its atolls rise just a few feet above sea level. The half meter sea level rise projected by climate scientists would submerge a significant proportion of the land on which the locals live. One of the least developed countries in the world, Kiribati, has contributed little to worldwide carbon emissions, yet has the most to lose from global warming. Should the locals of Kiribati surrender to climate change and evacuate, can anything be done to help them buy more time? Well, we'll find out in just a second. Today we have the privilege to interview Ambassador Tito. Ambassador Tito was the President and Foreign Minister of Kiribati from 1994 to 2003. Hi, I'm Seyun Yoon. I'm the founder and CEO of Echo the Eco. Echo the Eco is a newly established organization that strives to provide service and aid to those around the world that have been affected by climate change. Specifically, we hope to provide aid to small islands in the Central Pacific Ocean that are currently drowning as a result of rising sea levels. The citizens of these nations need funding and government support to be able to evacuate safely from the islands. And Kiribati is an island in the Central Pacific Ocean and it comprises of 33 atolls and reef islands. And it is reasonable to assume that many of you guys have not heard of Kiribati. But I'm sure that you guys heard of climate change. Some say that Kiribati will disappear from the map in the next few decades. And some also say that the island will be uninhabitable by the year of 2050. And I quote the 2017 annual report from the United Nations, Kiribati is already have reached the point of no return. And today we have the privilege to be joined by this gentleman, Ambassador Tito, and thank you very much for making this interview session possible. So, my first question is, as I've already mentioned, the gravity of climate change impacts on Kiribati, but really, like, how serious is it? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, because there's so many stories uh, about Kiribati, and you read them in the United Nations, you read them in newspapers, in the United Nations reports, you know, media reports. Uh, but let me tell you, let me tell you the, the, the reality on the ground. The islands are certainly being battered by the, you know, the the waves, the, the storms, the yeah, the uh, extreme weather, uh, weather, weather, weather events. Yes, the islands are, are being very much dis disturbed and disrupted by the the impact of climate change, but not to the extent, uh, as reported by by many people, that the islands are, are really sinking. They are not yet. I mean, but there is this fear. There is this fear that. Uh, if these uh, extreme events, climate events, continue, uh, mm -hmm. then there may be a possibility of that, uh, you know, disaster happening. So, right now, the government is trying to tell people that it, it will do all it can to make the island strong, resilient, and to stand against the the impact of climate change with the help of the world. And so this is now this is now the, the position of the present government, as different from the previous government, which was of course of the of the opinion that Kiribati was really going down and the, the, the people must be moving quickly and and the, and the land being purchased at the time. But this is it's kind of a yeah, it's taking a step back. The new government is saying, no, no, that is not the right way. We, we must not think of running away. We must not think of right. abandoning the island. So they're ready to combat and fight with the rest of the world. So you're saying that, the, that Kiribati is not actually in that much of a catastrophe compared to what the media is saying. That's right. That is right. That is right. That is, it's a little because exaggerated. There is, uh, I might say, an exaggeration. I guess some people want to, to see Kiribati in, 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 as sinking because they may have the, their own interest in seeing the island sinking. But to be honest with you, I want to put it straight. 
Yeah, the islands are being affected. It's disturbing the economy of the island, the water reserves, the crop, uh, you know, the settlement of people. They're very much, uh, you know, affected. And they yeah. are, of course, there are a lot of uh, hardship with the people. And they, but, they, but, but they're not yet to the point as projected in the media. You've mentioned that the stance has changed from before and after the two different presidents. That's and right. What made the stance change? Uh, the well, the the former president uh, uh, Tong, uh, President Tong, was of the view that they should uh, work on Plan B, which is to migrate, uh, migrate you know, to, to buy land in Fiji, and they already purchased land in Fiji, and they spent 9.3 million dollars for that oh, wow. as, a, 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 as a way of preparing for the worst scenario. But the present government is saying, no, we don't have to go to plan B. Let's work on plan A first. And plan A is to work hard, to rebuild, to re, 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 rebuild the broken causeways the broken sea walls, the, the roads that are broken, let us rebuild them. Let us call on the international community to rebuild some of these broken uh, parts of, of the island. And then if we still fail, then maybe think of plan B. But by the point where you guys fail, wouldn't it be too late to come up with a plan B? Yeah, it's a good point, but all right, there is land. I mean, the, the, the former president had purchased a land in Fiji, 4,000 5, acres mm -hmm. uh, for nine, $9.3 million. But the point is, we could have spent $9.3 million first on the, island. on the island before you know, buying a piece of land. So I, I thought it was uh. kind of reverse, like putting a cart, the cart before the horse type of thing. And $9.3 million from uh, a small nation is a lot of money. And $9.3 million could have been used to save many of these areas that have been destroyed. Some villages, some crop areas, sea walls, uh, bridges, causeways, public roads, you know, uh, this could have been fixed with the 9.3 million, but unfortunately, with due respect, with due respect, the previous leadership decided would plan to be fair. And now we, no, and of course, they, they neglected plan B, which is to, 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 to make the island strong with the help okay. of the international community. Okay. Um. Although some, a selected few have migrated out of the island, including yourself and your wife, and some like scholars from Kiribati have migrated from the island, right? It, it, is, uh, it, it is always the case that people in, in Kiribati and anywhere else in the islands, in the Pacific Island, they've always moved for education, for employment. Yeah, of course. You know, so, so this is nothing new, but to say, that people are already running away. That is not true. Again, there is this impression. There is this uh, story that many people in Kiribati have deliberately packed their you know, property, you know, belongings, and deliberately paid their way to move out of the island to New Zealand or to Australia. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. The truth is these people have been moving because when they see opportunity for employment, for education, for a better life, for a better life, something better than the island way of life, mm -hmm. so they'll move. Only those who, are, who have the ability will do it. Right. The rest are okay. They, they're in the island, but they listen. They keep their ears open to the government. Okay. Should they remain to stay or should they start preparing? Well, right now, the present government is saying, you don't have to panic, you know, stay, we, we're here, we're here to stay until such time. The government says, maybe we're singing, maybe we are not able to, maybe with the help of the, community, the international community and with our own resource, we are not able to keep the islands, you know, intact. And then 
and then that will be the time the, the government will tell the people that, that, that we must go to plan B mm -hmm. and plan B must go out to the world and ask the world to uh, help where to move to but right now I mean that is out of the question now okay right now they rather not think about it um. so we need help now we need help to fix we need to fix our sea walls so our, yes our causeways our infrastructure you know the roads the the drinking water the drinking water drinking water is important right. now many of these uh, drinking water areas have been inundated by sea water and a bigger day coming and it takes years to you know if the rain keeps falling mm -hmm. but when the rain doesn't fall then they will remain salty and so people right. have to turn to some other source of uh, drinking water so we need help we need this uh, uh, the machines that convert sea water into brackish water or sea water into fresh water we need this machine that can help the situation with, with, with drinking water. And when there is drinking water, we can start growing plants or crops, right? With that. We because need money to build, rebuild our causeways, our roads, right. our sea walls. Because, you know, it makes life uh, difficult when these things are not functioning properly. Okay, so in other words, instead of focusing on migrating out of the island, and you don't know when that will happen because currently the government's focus is working on projects on the island. On the island, yes, yes, yes. That's and right. one of the most biggest, like the biggest problem on the island include seawalls, infrastructures, and clean water, and agriculture. Agriculture, yes, yes, that's right. And we need a lot of help. We're talking in millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, and we don't have that. And yeah. so we don't get it. If we don't get it from the world, then we're going to have real problem on the island. We may end up, you know, not surviving properly on the island. We may end up, you know, not having good health, right? And due to rising sea levels, because of the sal sal salinity in the seawater, is that why the soils are getting destroyed and thus... Yes, yes, of course. The, the sea level itself is dangerous to the island because when the seawater starts getting into the soil, into, you know, Many plants won't grow. Only only those that are used the salty water will grow. But these don't produce fruits to eat, right? Mm -hmm. But the the, the 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 crops that 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 we live uh, with, uh, that we uh, you know we get our living from, they depend on fresh water, right? Of and so if there is lack of fresh water, or if the sea water is getting into the soil because the sea level rise and because of the storms and because of the, you know, the, the, the surges, the waves coming onto the land, mm -hmm. then that, that really affects the, the livelihood of the people. And this is okay. what we're going to do first, to, to sort of make the island strong, to build walls around the island, yes, strong walls, yes. And then like in Holland, you know, you must have uh, read a bit about Holland. Holland is really under sea level. For many hundreds of years, they've survived because they're strong. Right. They maintain, they keep building, the, you know, whatever dikes, whatever they call it, mm -hmm. around there. So, really, the, the ocean is this high here, but the people are living under the level. But they're able to do that because they, you know, they're strong, they are determined, okay. and we would like to do the same thing in Kiribati. Of course. Yes. Um, so you've mentioned that. It is a priority to get aid from the global community. That's right, yes. Now we are calling on the world community to help us, to bring the money needed of course. to rebuild the island, yes. And, and that I'm, is the climate, the Green Climate Fund. Mm -hmm. We are thankful that the Green Climate Fund is, you know, is available now. The, our government is processing, processing the, 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 the projects, okay. uh, documents in order to access the, the Green Climate Fund mm -hmm. and the global uh, facility, you know, the GEF, Global Environmental Facility, is another huge funding also. Mm -hmm. That has been around for quite some time. Wow. The Green Climate is more recent. So wow. these two fundings, we are now trying to get access into them. Yeah, and, and so we're working hard. I'm working hard here in, in consultation with people back in Kiribati 
They are now formulating the projects okay. and I'm already talking to people who are in charge uh, of the Green Climate Fund and the Global Environmental Fund, the GF, GEF, Jeff. Okay. Yes, so that is now our mission. Um, so going back to the global projects, I'm sure there are projects that were successful and unsuccessful. And what exactly does it, is it that Kiribati would need? Like the local immediate needs? The immediate need is to rebuild the seawall, you know, to, a, get, you know, to, to get the water, you know, to get the seawater out, to get the people back, their houses, because many houses have been moved from along the coast, okay? okay. Because the seawater keeps coming in and, you know, and destroying these houses. Of course, the, the houses are not made of bricks. They're made of local materials, so in a way, it doesn't cost too much. But it's still, it's an inconvenience. It's, it's an hardship for people mm -hmm. when they have to. When they have no houses, no homes to stay in. Mm -hmm. They start, you know, moving into other people's houses, relatives and friends. But that is not good enough. So, so we need to recover these areas that which have been, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, 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 Invaded by the sea, by the rising seas, we need to build walls there and, and help the people come back to where they used to. You see, uh, close to the okay. sea, because our people they want to be close to the sea because that's where the they fish, get fishers. the fishes and yeah. the shellfish and the lobster, you know, and the octopus. I mean, there's so much food yeah. in the sea. Um. And some people have been suggestive of building a desalination plant for fresh water supply. That is good. That is also. So we need to have money to get these desalination plants. Mm -hmm. I was in Israel recently and they have a machine that makes water out of, you know, water. the air. The air. You know, the water vapor in the air kind of going into the machine, to this, thing, cool it down and then you start getting fresh water. water. Fresh water from the moist of the air. Well, that would be very good also. Desalination. The, the, yes, that, the desalination is different because you get the salty water into the machine and then the machine filters out the, the salt mm -hmm. and leaves the fresh water for drinking. Uh -huh. But this one in Israel is very, 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 yeah, very clever. Yeah, they put the machine in the air, and the air sucks, the, the machine sucks the moist from the air, and, and then makes the water fresh, nice, clean water. And what energy does that desalination plant fuel on? Uh, at the moment, well, I saw these ones working with, you know, fuel, you know, the, the, fuel. the diesel fuel, you know, generators, and whatever. But they say they can also use uh, solar, solar panels. Solar panel, yes. They, we, I think they will build into that later. Uh -huh. But at least they've got something which is good for our people in the islands, far away from the urban area where there's no electricity. Mm -hmm. They can put them in the village with the, the, and, uh, with solar panel, and people can have clean, fresh drinking water, mm -hmm. so they don't get sick. Mm -hmm. and especially the babies, the children, and the sick people, right? Yeah. For the strong ones, they don't mind drinking water bit. from the well. Not very good, but they they, they can cope with it. Mm -hmm. But for the children and for the sick, I think the, fresh water, the, is the, yeah, the fresh water, fresh clean water. So these are the things that are needed now. Mm -hmm. We need this very badly. Okay. Um, I have a question about the local citizens of Kiribati. Um, how how aware are they about the projected impacts of climate change? I know that they do experience immediate impacts, yeah. like the artificial seawalls that they may have put up that are getting destroyed, or water going through yes. homes, or the fishers getting impacted. But how aware are they of the projected impacts? They are very much aware because in the last ten years. The previous government has been sort of telling people, no, we're leaving, we're leaving the island. So why? Why are we leaving? So there was, there's a lot of fear, actually. Fear in the people is has been there already. And then they begin to know why there is this uh, global warming and sea level rise. A lot of public awareness uh, was uh, carried out in the villages. So people are very much aware. But in fact, they are aware to the point they're very much 
fearful. But are they still in that current condition? They're, they're still in that, but the present government is trying to say, you know, don't be Word. fearful. No, no, wait, you know, come on, let's work together and work together and do whatever is necessary to make the island strong, to retain, you know, the, 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 the islands as they are. And they say, let's maintain our paradise. You know, let's make sure our paradise don't get lost okay. in, the, in the rising sea. Let us, you know, protect and let us work hard. And let us do everything that the world is asking us. Okay, some big countries are, are, doing, are doing the right thing now. They're cutting down on right mm -hmm. on emissions. And Kiribati people are also being asked. And you must also help in small ways. Although you're not, you know, you're not destroying the the, <coughs> the the atmospheric environment in the way they are destroying it in the big countries, <coughs> you you have small a, a part to play. So they're conscious now. They start planting mangroves, plant trees every day. There is this campaign about planting a tree a day or something around in, in the different parts of Kiribati, <laughs> and even the the, the eldest. Who you know were sixty you know, old people that now are aware, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they they they're now being told to you know to to cooperate in teaching their children and grandchildren also okay. in schools. They are also spreading the the message that we have to all be aware, be aware and and play our part, yeah, our even in small ways, even in small ways, okay? Mm -hmm. and so so this is. Not a problem anymore. The awareness is there. Um, I can't exactly remember when, but either 2013 or 2014, there was a case study from Yale University on the island of Maldives. And there was a shocking number of 40 something percent of the citizens saying that even, even if they were given the chance to migrate, they refused to do so. And that was kind of sparking to me because I personally believe that if they were given the migration opportunity, if they were given the opportunity to flee from this all catastrophic climate mm. change impacts, mm. they would leave without a hesitation. Yeah. But apparently, because of cultural reasons and because of their family that they were raised, they believe that migration is not the key to solve this issue. And you, you mentioned that currently it is important that we focus on plan A where we focus on land of Kiribati. Um, if there were a condition coming and there are no other options but to migrate, wouldn't it be a problem of citizens thinking that migration is not the key? Well, if it is a, a matter of life and death, I'm sure, you know, no one would be crazy enough to, to stay in <laughs> something that is, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. you know, I'm talking yeah. about it, you know, human intelligence. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure they will, you know, people, any, any person with a reasonable uh, uh, sense of, uh, <laughs> of knowing the, what is right, what is wrong, yeah. yeah, would certainly take the choice of moving out of, a, of, a, of a something that is sinking. Right? Right. But, but now I guess it's all theoretical, you see. Because I, even in the islands, because they don't know their science, they're still questioning their science. You know, a lot of people, because they believe more in the God, you know, because a lot of people. Oh, is it a lot, yeah, a lot of religious? A lot of, because it's a very religious community here. We talk about the Christian. Oh, Christian, a lot of Christianity? Oh, they use it 90, 95%. Oh, wow. And these people, of course, in the Bible and what have you, you know, they believe what the pastors and what the mm -hmm. the the, 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 lead, the the church leaders tell them. And of course, this is about you know faith. It's about uh, a belief, belief in the in the in the super in the super being controlling the planet and and everything in the universe. So that is also one area that. That, that, that can make people critical when you go to see them in the village and you talk about this thing, you have people say, but the Bible say this, but you know, you know we, we don't believe you because we don't believe the scientists, but we believe the Bible, you know? Because they're unaware of the actual science. But because they don't know the science, you know, who knows the science? Only those who, 
who, are, who read the science, but these people can't read science. Mm -hmm. But they are being told, the science says this, the science says this. They don't really believe it straight away because they never read it, but they are being told. Mm -hmm. But they read the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible is more real. So there is this uh, conflict, but never mind. They give in when the government say, okay, this is something we're going to do together. Let's build the island, and they're happy to build. And if the government say, let us for abandon the island, let's move, I'm sure they will listen to the government. Of <laughs> yes, of course. Um, because they trust the government. Yeah, of course. Um, in the United States, there's a program for high schoolers called DARE. It's a program where first first responders, like fire firefighters and policemen, would take turns and go around and give health classes to high school students, and this is to, and a lot in a lot of high schools now this is a course that is required to graduate, which means that all high schoolers will now have at least some background knowledge of a sexual education. Uh. And I was wondering because you've mentioned that at Kiribati a lot of people either do not believe in the science or are un unaware of the science, thus making them not believe in rising sea levels, correct? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if there could be a, if it would be a good idea, as like it could be a governmental recommendation where uh, first respondents like firefighters and policemen would take turns going around high schools, or people like me who wants to genuinely want to help mm -hmm. go around the high schools and does not have to be required, or just go around villages and let them know of not very scientific stuff to back up the actual truth, yeah. but to an attempt to raise awareness, at least try to tell them what's actually going on. Because I believe that local awareness is actually a key thing in this movement. Yes, yes, I agree that we need to do more, you see, because science is a very rare thing. Even in school, only a few people take science, right? Not everybody, maybe half, half the school population in high school, they take science, mm -hmm. and the rest take the arts, right? Mm -hmm. And so, the, we need to uh, engage those who don't understand the science, but we need to do it in a language that is simple. We need to maybe produce uh, some, well, maybe produce films uh, that will make them easily understand, you know, that the science of, of climate change, right? Mm -hmm. so right now, as I said, there are those who, who can understand and they easily pick it up and they easily believe in it, believe in what what what, what the United Nations or what the you know the the the, the you know the, the, the advocates of climate change threats are talking about. But there are there are those then who who need it to be assisted in order to, to be fully convinced that there is something called climate change, right? Mm -hmm. Which has to do with the, well, with the behavior of human beings in the last, uh, what, 100, 200 years, right? Mm -hmm. That's my understanding, and I'm sure that is also your understanding. Yes. And the nature has been overexploited, right? Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, you get an excess amount of carbon dioxide and what have you, warming the planet. And it will take time to re, you know, to, to, to make that balance. It will take time and we need to do, we need, we need to you know, cut back, you know, I mean, somehow, you know, that everybody needs to cut back. And this is where people, even in the small islands, have to appreciate that they also have a role to play. Because if they don't, they, they won't cooperate. They won't be part of the planting of trees and, and cutting down on the, the burning of forests, what have you, right? Mm -hmm. they, will, they will not protect nature. They will continue to, to be careless in the way they exploit the nature. But I think the message now, as I get it from the climate change uh, uh, narrative, mm -hmm. is to all trying to moderate, cut back mm -hmm. from the big companies to the small people in the village. Let's try and cut back on the exploitation of the planet, right? Of course.
Yeah. Um, so, raising local awareness, going back to my point. Yes. It's not an importance? No, no, it's, 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 uh, to me it can be easily fixed. I mean, this is why we're in schools. But I'm talking about the older generation, it takes time because they passed away from school, all right? So we're talking about the generation that's already out of school and they don't understand the science and they can't even appreciate what the science is saying. But for those coming up, I think we have no problem because they are now in the schools and the schools are already organizing programs. To educate them, to educate them. The subject. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think there's an environmental, uh, there's a, a subject now being taken around the schools. You know, in addition to their public awareness that they visit schools and visit villages, I think they're also coming up with a, a curriculum in schools. Okay, that's good. That, nice. that will sort of make sure that everybody, even if they're not studying science, they understand what's going on. What's going on. Okay. And, 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 and try to um, adjust, you know, try and, and adjust their behaviors okay. and attitude, of course, and, and behaviors so that we can save the planet. Because I think the, the message now is the planet is in trouble, right? Yes. And then these are some of the signs, of the bad signs of a troubled planet. Mm -hmm. And the planet is in trouble because we human beings have been careless. Right. Right? Right, and basically. So, and so let us try and, and, and be be more <coughs> yeah, friendly to our friend. <laughs> no, to, 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 to respect mother, mother, mother nature. Mother nature. Yeah, there's so many ways of expressing it, but I think uh, I think there is now a move now in, in, in many Pacific Islands to go back to the traditional practices of the forefathers who were very good in, in working with nature. They were very, very friendly with nature. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, they forgot those ways. Now they're going back, they're digging back into those traditional practices mm -hmm. where the people in those days had great respect for the nature around them. Mm -hmm. And they would not be doing too much harm for the for the plants and the plants and to the animals and to the, they will just take what is enough. We need that mindset back, everybody. I think so. <laughs> I think you are now in a position. You are young leaders. Mm -hmm. and you are the ones to cultivate this from from this level, as you know, in, in in college, in high schools, and and you carry with it. And I'm sure. The world would be a better place when you are in charge. When yeah. your generation is in charge, and I'm sure. Hopefully, I mean, for sure, we have. I, to. I think we I don't have a choice. We have to. Well, from, from, from what you, from from what I can gather from you, I I, I can see you are, you believe in it, and you you have some passion for it, right? Yeah. Or a lot of passion, right? Mm -hmm. So, I I will say that I think the future is bright. Hopefully. Yes, I think the future is bright. Um, I have a question regarding what we can do. So I've actually thought about, because there obviously we don't have the funding, we don't have millions and billions of dollars behind our back. I was thinking what exactly what my group can do. And I was thinking about raising local awareness, just like the program I've told you before, but it seems like they're actually very aware of what's going on. Yes, just tell others what's happening from a small legal effort. Okay. All right. And who knows, there might be other people joining in. And as a result, Kitty has become much more well known to be a country that really needs this assistance. Mm -hmm. And it's because of a small effort that you have done with your film, with whatever, whatever you can do mm -hmm. in the media. Mm -hmm. Once you get into the media, the media will be will be, I'm sure they'll be interested, they'll be very powerful, these media. Mm -hmm. They can take the world in, in a certain direction overnight. Of course. Of course. Hopefully the right direction, sometimes not the right direction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. How are they the danger now, and I think I need to tell you, we have some big companies in the world mm -hmm. who want us to keep saying 
we are sinking because they are thinking of getting money from the Green Climate Fund and the Global Environmental Facility in, in billions of dollars to build a floating island. island. A floating island. A floating island project to me is, a, is not a good project. Mm -hmm. But they are trying to sell this. And this is where sometimes they want to use us to cry out and say, we're sinking, we're sinking, we have no hope. And then they will come in and say, these people are sinking. The only option so one one is, one. To have a, is to build a floating ladder. And this is something I know is happening already. In Kiribati, we have companies coming. For tourists. Oh, the company, company is coming and just share the concept to people. You, you are thinking, are you? You're afraid. Yeah, we're afraid. And they capture people afraid and, and, and scared. And then they come back. Sometime later, we've got this, a floating island. If you support a floating island, we will make a floating island for you people. You can be on it with coconut trees on it, pandanus trees, with, you know, with the culture there. That to me. It's not right. Taking advantage. And so the money is not going to the solar panel. The money is not going to the seawall. The money is not going to, you know, to recover the crop area. Mm -hmm. It's going to them. To them. Right. Making them bigger and bigger. But that is not the point. I mean, they're using the crimes of the victims. That is crazy. But it is uh, uh, that this is where the world can be crazy. That we use, uh, you know, people who are suffering to their own advantage. to you know, to create advantage, to create benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, thriving on the misery of people, building themselves on the misery of people. And that is something which is not acceptable. And I, I want to ask you while you are there to help us, make sure you, you go against, make sure you beware of, of, of companies or people wanting to take advantage of our misery. Okay. So that it would be my request to you and to your, those of you who want to really help Kilbes. Ask the world to come with their money to build, to rebuild the island, make the island strong. And then we will be there, I'm sure. Okay. Remain, I'm sure you would want us to remain in the islands. Of course. Of course, thank you for that. And if that is your aim, then we are on the same page. Well, I'm glad that we're on the same page. I think we are. So, um, so I understood, I understand that the priority is on developing the island itself. Yes. Um, and as we, high schoolers or college students, as I mentioned before, don't have the funding of no. millions and billions of dollars. And with the small funding we have, what is the best effort that we can put in to actually help these people, to immediately help help these local people? Yes, I'm sure you now, now know the answer to that question. I thought I've already shared to you. To let people know, you know to yes. spread awareness? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm sure with those little funding you have, yeah. you can even do magic to the problem of people by donating or by bringing something like that and raising uh, the you know, by, by by publicizing that right in the media I'm sure that will uh, attract other people to come and help you have a voice I'm sure you can make a uh, you can you, you can talk with your uh, with a good voice you have a students I'm sure that your voice can carry a lot of weight also. Okay. And you can also make sure that our problems and difficulties are, are not being kept and not being used for the benefit of others, of the, of the guys who are already, already powerful. Already powerful and uh, and uh, well off mm -hmm. right 
But the problem is some people believe in getting more and more. They, they never know when to stop, you know. Greed. The, the greed, the insatiable uh, hunger. And hunger that, and the greed that, that, that has no limits. Mm -hmm. I think that's what has damaged the planet. I mean, the planet's been damaged, not by small people. To me, it's not the small people who damage the planet. The big guys, the big powerful ones, want to have uh, wealth and property all over the world, here and there and there, right? Mm -hmm. We're okay, we have a home, we have a family, and we have some money there and something there. But that's about enough we need. More ordinary people feel like that, but there are many people in the world, they're very powerful. I don't know if this is the right place to say this, but I actually find it very unfortunate how the countries, the people that are actually doing the most emission are coming from the countries that are getting least affected. And whereas Kiribati, I'm sure they do emit something, actually are one of the countries that emit the least but are getting affected the most. Thank you. I think you're right. And that is why we need to go out and, and make a, a voice in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and with you, you know, uh, adding to that voice, that would be very, very helpful. And so I'm here making that voice. It's a small voice. But, and, and I am uh, encouraging my colleagues from small island states to stand together and make the, a big voice, a voice that the world can hear. Because and we want to change, I think, the future of the world. Because mm -hmm. if not, we will continue to be marginalized. We will continue to suffer. In 2013, actually, the government said that the first priority at the international level is ensure that the Pacific region maintains a strong voice international flora and I hope I can help maintaining that international power and the voice. Yes, yes, we're already working on that. The Pacific group, the small island group in the United Nations, we, you know, no, we, we keep talking and we keep uh, encouraging each other. Uh, we keep meeting and we, you know, whenever there is something on climate change, we want to make a voice. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so we're doing that, yes. And we will continue to do that. Whether we change the world, we change the the behavior of, uh, of, 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 the, of the big, the big powerful ones, yeah. I hope we do, I hope we, because we cannot change the behavior, the attitude, the mindset of the big powerful ones, then we are wasting our time. The world will continue to get worse and worse, you know, right? Yeah. But we, we are hopeful, or we believe in being optimistic, optimistic. and positive, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we, I wouldn't be spending my time here. I would rather go back. But I believe we, 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 we that, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That, that is my hope belief. in humanity. Yeah, I, I think I think there is. And with students like yourself, you know, you know, adding to that for voice, good, mm -hmm. good. I'm glad that you're from here. You're from the United States oh, yeah. yourself, are you from no, other countries? I'm from South Korea. Korea. Oh, I'm South Korea, Korea but yeah. Oh, so you're studying here, and you yeah. eventually yeah. you'll go back. Yes, I will be going back. Well, yeah. yeah. Ban Ki moon was the, uh, the, the champion of the climate change in yeah. 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 Korea, right? Yeah. He's, now, he's now retired, but uh, he's now, of course, well known as the champion of. He's the one who made the climate change, you know, really put it forward and, and to achieve the Paris Agreement, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so you can continue the, to, you know, to follow the good, the footsteps, uh, the, the good footsteps of, uh, of your uh, great countryman, Ban ki -moon. Yeah, I think you're on the right track. Um, I know I've asked this question before, but you, about what I can do, and you said spreading awareness and raising voice in terms of helping people understand what the island actually needs and what actually the island does not want. Um, but I really want to know what I can do on a local level. Like you said, from the small fundings we have, we can start something very small on the island, which has the potential to spark attention. Um, what exactly with the small funding we have can we do on the island that actually might help the people? I think the water. To the me, water. It's between the panel and the water, but to me, I think the water comes first. <coughs> Creating, you know, bringing in those uh, desalination, right? Okay. 
And from what I understand, on the island, there's something called the Tamana pump, is that correct? Where they have a... Uh, a pump, yeah, Tamana pump, they make, they, 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 they really, they a genius, some of the genius on the island, they, they create a pump which draws water from the well, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and makes it easy. Even the women can do it, you know, because usually a pump is difficult, you know, it takes a lot of muscle and mm -hmm. right, yeah, manpower, but they create a pump which can draw water easily. With a little pull, you get a lot of water coming out and fill up a bucket, you see? Mm -hmm. And they call it Tamana pump. So, pumps. You know, so you're, you're up to date, you're well aware of what's going on. Yeah, there's a tamana pump there, uh, but that comes from the well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from I'm talking about the desalination, which means getting the turning the sea water, into, or water. In, into, into fresh water. Because from what I understand, a tamana pump seemed like a very good solution, but it actually is sometimes contaminated and also uses the fresh water underneath the island, which yes, might actually right. do a lot of damage in the future. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's not, yeah, because they, they tend to draw more than they used to draw, mm -hmm. and they waste it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you do it, you know, with a normal pump or with a little can where you draw in the pump, then you, you know, which, you know, you conserve the water. But if you're going to create a pump, well, just pull it out. And that's the problem with solar pump, because then the mana pump was replaced by the solar pump, which is another panel. And this just runs, you know, while the sun is there. You know, waste the water underneath. And then you create, you know, all the fresh water drawn out, and in its place you have salty water, bracket salty. Because the water lens is only a certain amount underneath the land. When, when that island was created, there was this place underneath called the water lens. When the rain comes down, Collects and you know, builds there. It's a lens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes very thick, sometimes very thin. Okay. But, and then, and so when there is no rain, when there is a long dry season, then you, you find the wells near the houses Bye. getting salty. You have to move further yeah. inside the land, and then you have to take about one hour, half an hour going and half an hour coming back. It's a lot of hard work. But then they bring in the solar pump with pipes to the villages, and that's when we had problems again. And do you know a rough estimate of the funding that is required to build one desalination plant? I think, well, there is one already as an experiment there, which is brought from Britain. There's a guy who's married to a, a British guy, married to a local a woman. And he's very much committed. So he brought this as a model and asked the government to look at it. But somehow the government has not yet made a decision. But you may have another model. But this one cost something like uh, maybe 60, 70,000. 70,000 US dollars? Yeah, 70,000 US dollars. That's the one I get. But it, it depends on the size, how much, how much the output, right? Yeah. But that one is producing like. Uh, I think it's good for a small village. It's good for a small village. Yeah. Um, and after the interview, would it be okay if I get his contacts or? Any, yes. Any more? Okay. I can give you the contact of the of this uh, family that I have it, and of course the people in the community they come and taste the water. Even they they're being assisted, they're being they're help, helping children and uh, and families who uh, don't have enough water, green clean water. Mm -hmm. They get it free of it because it's just part of the publicity, but you may want to look at that or you may want to engage with this family. Mm -hmm. And who knows, you might be able to find funding to provide one to go to a village. Mm -hmm. Right? Nice. And yeah. then that will spark out, the spark off the, the good news. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it as a student group, I'm sure some bigger uh, group with bigger resources can, will do more, right? Yeah, definitely, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, I have a last question. Yes. And so, in reality, a lot of people do not actually necessarily care about the subject matter of Kiribati drowning or just care about rising sea levels or anything because it doesn't directly impact them, right? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, 
No, because, because not everybody is empathic. We're just talking about a uh, certain proportion of the population. No, no, no. I'm saying that in the global community, yes. there are a lot of people that are not affected from rising sea levels. Yes. And which means that a lot of people actually don't care about the subject of rising sea levels right. and climate change. Okay, 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 okay. And my last question is, what would you say to those people? Well, we would uh, ask them to reconsider their opinion. We would ask them to maybe take time and make time and come and, and, and see the islands. Could you please say that to the camera? Yes, we would like to ask them, ask these people to change their opinion and also ask them to, to come to Kiribati and, and see, see the islands for themselves, see what's going on, see the, the impact of climate change, see the damage, see the, the amount of, uh, uh, of damage and the amount of uh, suffering that people are going through, especially those who are being affected by the impact of climate change. Well, thank you for giving us time to make this interview possible. Huh? My pleasure. Thank you for taking the trouble of coming all the way no. to see me on that, and I appreciate it. I think it's, it's a very worthwhile uh, uh, meeting. Very, very useful for, for Kiribati, and also for you in your, in your wanting to help, in your wanting to reach out to the, to the people in Kiribati, wanting to help our people, so I thank you for that. Okay.